We've looked at the basics of Substance 3D Designer in the previous video. Let's try a few new techniques while we build some more interesting shapes and patterns. We'll be looking at three core techniques, blending noises, warping, and blurring. Let's start by creating a new substance graph. We'll pick the empty template and name it Paint Stroke. We'll start our graph by bringing in the familiar shape node. Instead of the hard square, I'll set shape to brick. Some shapes have a pattern specific slider. For brick, this lets me change the hardness of the edges. I'll adjust the proportions a bit too. I want to make a rectangular shape that looks like a paint smear. That's why I'm going for this soft rectangle. Those soft edges need to be broken up, made to look grungy. Let's look through our noise library for a noise that looks grungy and directional. The thumbnail for Grunge Map 2 looks pretty good, so let's bring it in. We'll add a blend node and combine our shape and our noise. Cycling through the blend modes shows me multiply looks like a good way to combine them. I want to add some more body and contrast to the shape. A simple way to add contrast is by using a contrast luminosity node. It lets me change contrast quickly, but the luminosity control affects my black parts too much. Let's delete that node and try another one. A very useful node here is the levels node. It works like the levels dialog in Photoshop, setting high and low sliders to change brightness and contrast with maximum control. We even have a separate dedicated video on levels. Levels make things look a lot better, but we can't make the inside part become solid with it. Going back to the blend node, trying out the add sub blend mode gives even better results. Add sub works well on fading transitions combined with noises. When we're happy with this result, let's add an output node to finish the graph for now. Next, let's use noises to create a more complex fabric pattern. After creating another empty graph and renaming it, we'll create a tile generator node, as well as a new node called Gradient Linear 2. Gradient Linear 2 represents a soft arc-shaped slope, and it's good for representing stitches weaving in and out. We'll connect it up and set the pattern to image input. Now we want our pattern to alternate directions every other stitch. We can't do that directly in a single tile generator, so we scroll down to color and turn on checker mask, disabling every other shape. Next, let's duplicate this tile generator node with hotkey control or command D. We want this node to fill those gaps, so in the color section, a bit below checker mask, there's a button to invert the mask. All that's left is to set the rotation of our shapes to 90 degrees. Looking closely, these gradients are too perfect for stitches. We want to add some noise to represent the fibers. In the noise category, a good noise for many small fibers or lines is the anisotropic noise. Once we add that, let's increase the Y amount to get a higher density. Then we'll add our blend node, connect our nodes, and set the blend mode to multiply. The result could be a bit more subtle. Changing the blend's opacity slider affects only the foreground layer. So if we want the opposite, the X hotkey on our connections swaps the behavior of the opacity, letting us add subtle lines. To repeat that for the other tile generator, we can again duplicate the blend node with Ctrl or Command D, and then connect our first tile generator. The lines are running in the wrong direction. Instead of duplicating this time, we can use a Transformation 2D node. So select the line, and in the Transformation 2D node, there's a button to do quick 90 degree rotations. Our two alternating stitch patterns are almost ready. Let's combine them with another blend node. Remember to set the blending mode to something like Add. And also remember that Designer doesn't require you to work in a specific order. You can always go back and add modifications at the start. Let's do that now. The contrast for the gradient is a bit too high. If we add a levels node, but need to insert it in existing connections, we can shift click on existing connections to pick them up and move them to another node. This lets you rearrange multiple connections at once. Then we can adjust the level out low slider to reduce the contrast a bit for less harsh results. Remember, we can double click on the end result to preview it and single click on the levels node to change those properties. Let's not forget to add an output node at the end of our graph. Looking more closely, our pattern still looks a bit straight and perfect. It would be good to distort it a bit to add some variation. 
we can use a new important technique for this, the warp node. Warp always requires two inputs. The top input is what you'll be warping. We need to connect some kind of noise to the second gradient input to get random distortion. A good safe choice here is to use a Gaussian noise node. Warp has very heavy effects by default. Changing the intensity slider quickly lets you tone the effect down. You'll notice our straight pattern becomes more wobbly with warp. There's a strong relation between the scale of your inputs and the density with warp. You'll always have to go between the Gaussian noise scale and the intensity to find a good balance. Just tweak it a bit until it looks right. So where blending noises mixes in detail, warp can distort and add waviness to shapes. Let's do another quick pattern to practice using warp one more time. I want to create a polka dot pattern that looks hand placed, so we'll create a new empty graph for it. I'll start with the shape node and set it to disk and scale it down a bit. The circle looks too perfect, so we'll add a new warp node and a Gaussian noise. This time, our shapes are much larger, so we need to tweak the noise scale and warp intensity to match that. After some tweaking, we end up with a distorted circle. Just like we've done before, we'll add a tile generator and connect the warped circle. I'll change a few settings like amount, pattern, scale, offset, and random position and random rotation. With a bit of tweaking, our pattern is starting to look like it was made by hand. It can do with some detail, so let's add one more warp and a Gaussian noise. Again, the scale is different and we need to tweak the intensity accordingly. This method, using multiple times an effect at different scales is often key to getting interesting shapes and patterns. You've also noticed how in substance graphs, multiple nodes can affect each other, requiring some back and forth tweaking. We've got one more warp technique to cover. Let's go back to the paint stroke graph for that. A regular warp node is a bit uncontrolled. Sometimes you might want to distort in a specific direction or area. The directional warp is a slightly different warp node that doesn't distort in all directions, but lets you choose a direction combined with a gradient input to control the strength. Used together with a linear gradient number two, we can bend our paint stroke in a specific direction. Using the intensity slider, you can tweak it further. Now let's do one last final pattern to combine what we learned so far. We'll make a new empty graph and call it tiger since we want to make an organic tiger stripe pattern. Starting off with a shape node, we change its properties to be long and thin. Then we hook it up to a tile generator and put it to use. Our pattern needs to look organic, so we're adding some random position. Then we change the rotation somewhere close to 145 degrees. The key step will be to increase the scale far beyond one. By clicking on the scale value, we can type in numbers higher than the slider supports. At about four, the shapes overlap a lot, leaving only small gaps. A very useful slider at this point sits at the bottom in the color section. The random mask slider randomly removes a percentage of shapes, creating more or less black gaps. Now, this pattern only really looks like tiger stripes if you squint your eyes. So that's exactly what our final key technique does. The blur node blurs an input and removes detail. It softens and blends shapes together. The intensity slider controls this effect. We don't want those soft slopes, so we can make use of a node that instantly returns high contrasted edges to an input. Searching for threshold gives us a node that turns any input to monochrome. The slider lets you control the transition point. You can see our pattern has started to blend together and feel more organic. After some tweaking, the intensity of the blur and the threshold were getting closer. So this pattern could also do with some waviness. We'll apply the same effect with warp and a Gaussian noise node. We've done this before, so we just tweak it until it looks right. To add some smaller detail, we'll use a second warp, but this time with another noise. The clouds one noise is much higher detail. So much that even with the intensity reduced, it's still breaking up the shape too much. You can solve this by inserting a blur node between the clouds and the warp. The blur removes detail and softens the effect of the warp. Jumping between noise, blur, and warp, you can tweak all aspects of this effect.
After adding all steps to a complicated pattern, it's often a good idea to revisit earlier steps and see if tweaking those makes a difference. Changing the initial shape gives thinner lines, modifying the X and Y mount changes the pattern scale, and tweaking the random mask of the tile generator affects the coverage. Once we're happy, an output node wraps things up. So these simple black and white nodes and shapes can already be useful in another program like Substance 3D Painter. If we first save our package, we can use the send to functionality by right clicking on the package. Before sending something to Painter though, it's best to prepare each graph with a small detail. Double click on an empty space and unfold the attributes group. You can find the type of an asset that we're sending to Painter. Without setting this up, Painter might not correctly know how to categorize our asset in the assets panel. So we're gonna go through each of the graphs and choose texture generator as type. Texture generator is a good choice as all we're really doing is generating a single texture in each graph. Once that's done, you can use the send to menu and pick substance 3D painter. Switch over and you'll see your assets ready to use. You can then use them to improve your work. For example, as an alpha for a brush, as a fill effect for a mask, or you can even use that fabric pattern as a height map for a material. If you're interested, we have a separate video series on painting this roller skate. With this video, you've hopefully learned some key techniques for shapes and patterns, and seen how they can be easily brought to Substance 3D Painter to unleash even more creative possibilities. Next up, we'll combine patterns into a full material and dive into parameters to unlock the full potential of Substance.